Okay, so I think the last thing I want to show for this section is how to do quick and dirty um, sunlight studies. Okay, so Rhino 5 uh, has some animation capabilities built in, and one of these is the, the possibility to, to render an animation of the sun moving. So your objects are still, but the sun is moving. Um, and Rhino obviously isn't a super advanced um, uh, animation software like Max or Maya, but it has built in these really simple types of animations just to help you in the design process. Uh, so in order to do this, you want to have your animation toolbar activated. And if you go in Rhino 5, uh, all the toolbars are kind of stacked on top here. And if you go to um, the little gear icon on the upper right, show toolbar, and make sure animation is clicked on. It will pop up somewhere on your screen. And then you can just dock it to the top. Um, so the animation kind of setup is a little bit clunky because Rhino doesn't include like a time slider or any of these other common animation tools like more dedicated animation software. Uh, but they make it work as long as you kind of follow the steps. Uh, it should be okay. So to set up a basic animation, you click this little uh, arrow in the bottom right and it has four types of animations. And the sunlight animations are in the left. That's what we want. And it's basically left click to get a day simulation right click to get a year seasonal simulation. Okay, so if we left click here, we get this one day sun animation set up. Uh, you have to go through, this is a little bit separate from the sun dialogue, so if you set up your sun already, you have to do it again. And this is because this animation, it dynamically generates a sunlight each time you render a frame. So if you do it over every hour for 24 hours, it'll generate 24 different lights and then automatically write sun. Okay, it's a little bit, weird, but uh, it's not a super big deal. You just have to go in here again, uh, set up your location, and then you tell it the north angle again. So I think I'm going to stick with 180 because that's what was working before. And then you tell it the day of the year you want to simulate, and then the range of hours, so 6 a.m., 6 p.m., it's roughly sunrise, sunset, and then the number of minutes uh, between frames you want it to render, the file type, and then here you can select what you want it uh, to use for the rendering. So you can either take a screenshot of the viewport, and that's these down here, so this is the rendered viewport. This will just take a screenshot of my view. Or you can tell it to do render full, where it will actually trigger your rendering uh, software uh, each time to render each frame. So we can actually use V-Ray to output uh, the frames. So we're gonna start with just screenshots, just to give it a test, even though it won't be super accurate shadows. And then you tell it which viewport you want it to render, and then the animation name here, I'm going to say uh, animation test viewport. Okay, click OK. Uh, and the last thing we want to do is, like I said before, this is a little bit separate from the sun uh, model. So it creates a new sun every time. So we want to actually go back into sun and disable our sun that's in the model. If you don't do this, uh, basically you'll get two sun sources because this one will stay here and then a new one will be generated in a new position at a time. Okay, so it's not super important to remember that. Um, it will be very clear if you don't do it and then you'll just remember to uncheck this. Okay, so once this is set up, uh, we just we can hit uh, record animation and this will cycle through every frame and save out all of our screenshots. It's important that you save before you do this because once you hit record, you can't stop it. If we hit record, you tell it the target folder. I'm just going to change this to workshop one. And then you can keep this uh, off. This will just generate kind of a, a HTML-based widget for you to cycle through the animation, but we don't, we don't really care about that. OK, and you hit Enter. And you can see it cycles through the whole day, and it just took a screenshot of every point in that day. So if we go to animation here, you see that's generated one screenshot for every hour of the day. Okay, so that's pretty good. Again, it's not super accurate. So what I want to do now is actually do the same thing, but in V-Ray. Uh, and that's really simple. We just have to go back to the animation day study. And we change this to render full. Hit OK. 
And there's one option you have to change in V-Ray for it to, to work. Uh, I'll show you what happens if you don't change this option. So if I hit record now, you'll see that it starts rendering the first frame and then it basically errors out. It says, please wait for the current render finish. That's because Rhino is telling it to render things too fast. And that's really easy to solve. Uh, you just go into the V-Ray options and you make sure that in your global switches, batch renders on. And batch render will just um, queue up all the requests and then execute them in time, rather than kind of being overwhelmed by requests. Okay, so once we have that set, uh, we can hit record animation, hit enter. So on one issue you see here, I kind of forgot about something, um, is that it's really dark and the sun's really not coming through. And this is another kind of slightly confusing point where the sunlight that's being generated dynamically by the animation isn't as bright as the default uh, sun. So, okay, so this, the, the last thing I want to do is I just want to uncheck the physical camera so V-Ray works with these uh, dynamic lights. So again, it's not super, um, you know, it's a little bit clunky, but as long as you kind of remember the right things, you can generate these very simple um, animations. I hit render again. Ah, shoot. Oh, I know what I have to do. I have to turn off the environment. Sorry about that. So I'm going to go back to options. I'm going to try a few things. Um, first off, I'm going to get rid of this sky. I think the sky is also really bright. So it's messing up the, uh, the rendering. And so this is just back to the default. Let me try that. A little bit better. Yeah, let's turn down the skylight. Um, the sky's still pretty bright. It's kind of blowing out the um, this, the sun. And it, this is very common that you have to tweak things. Um, usually, you can get something. All right. So see, now I have the environment. There's no sun here. I'll tweak this some more, just to get the environment looking reasonable. And by the way, I can show you. Um, how it's generating these dynamic suns. So you can just see that reference. Uh, if you turn on your sun dialog, go to lights. See right now we have one sunlight, and as I run this animation, you can see how it's generating a new sun every time. Okay, so now we're getting something more reasonable. You see that every time it's, it starts a new animation uh, frame, it generates a new light dynamic. So that's why you have to make sure the sunlight's off, and you have to kind of tweak your environment and camera settings to match this kind of dynamic light. So again, it's not like the easiest way uh, it could be done, but straight in Rhino, it's really fast, so it could help if you already have this set up. Okay, so now I am going to just run through a whole day. I'll just do once every hour. This should generate uh, 13 frames. So I'm just gonna run this through and I'll show you how to composite it in Photoshop uh, really quickly to get that kind of sun steady image. So once you have your rendered um, images, you can go to Photoshop and to load in all the images into one document, there's a really convenient script. Uh, you go to File, Scripts, load files into stack, and then you can go to browse, and select all of the images that you want to combine, okay? So those are all in there, you can hit okay, and it'll create a new document with each image uh, on its own layer. So once they're all loaded, uh, it's really easy to combine them. You can select all the layers, and then go to your blending options, so this dictates how uh, the layers stack on top of each other. You can go to multiply, and at first it gives you a really dark image because it's basically multiplying all the levels together. Um, and to fix that quickly, you can just drop the opacity of all the layers. You start to see that composite shadow steady. All right, and then finally, you can just drop in a background
there we go. So again, it's nothing too complicated. Uh, it's not gonna give you any like quantitative evaluation of what's going on in the sun, but this is a really quick way just to show how whatever you're designing is impacting the site. Again, there's a few kind of hiccups, but once you have this process down, you can generate these really quick and for any given form, start to talk about how it impacts the sun uh, or the, the shading on the site over the course of the year or over the course of the day. I didn't show you the uh, seasonal study, but it works exactly the same way. You just right click on the icon. So left clicking, it'll allow you to set year ranges instead of time ranges.